before we get started, please hit that like, comment, and subscribe button down below. It really helps the channel out and helps me know that you guys like this kind of content. And also, if you guys didn't see our merch dropped about last week or maybe two weeks ago, whenever this video is going out, uh, dropped recently, and the link is down in the description below, as well as the link for Apparel EFX, the best in the game, down below get yourself 10 percent off using either my code or chris's code m-i-t-a or c-h-v-i but without further ado let's get on to what you clicked this video for and that is learning how to create more power in your blowing release increase those rev rates throw those messengers across the lane and throw more strikes so there are going to be three main components that i'm going to be discussing today on how to generate more consistent power and the first is gonna be shoulder orientation or upper body orientation. Uh, what I see way too often is a lot of people having their shoulders a little too level. And you've probably been told at least once or twice in your life to keep your right shoulder up if you're a right-handed bowler, left shoulder up if you're a left-handed bowler. And I'm not saying that's wrong, but if you wanna generate power, uh, it's gonna be very difficult for you to do so, keeping your shoulder up. If you take a look at all of the touring professionals, pretty much, uh, that right shoulder is dropping, or left shoulder for lefties. So why you wanna drop the shoulder is because if I have a ball in my hand, right here, you can get it in a frame. If I have a ball right here in my hand, you could see that that ball would be outside of my head. And it's hard to generate power when the ball is coming on an arc and it's going around your body like this. Right? Now let me get into a finished position here. And if I have my shoulder square, like I was saying, see how that hand still ends up outside of my head. If I were to draw a line just straight down, straight up from my hand, it'd be outside of my head. But here, when I drop the shoulder, now I can get it right under my head. As you can see, my hand is right under my head. That's where the ball would end up. And also what that does for you, it enables you to create a straight swing arc right so like that I can release it early back here I can release it on time or I can release it late and still on that same plane and that is how high-level bowlers who generate a lot of power do it consistently it's not like we release it the same every time it's just that we put ourselves in positions to be able to release it in a more consistent direction more often without being perfect because like I said if you end up with that right shoulder high, now, if I'm just swinging my arm, now you can see it's on a sideways arc. So if I release it early, I release it early, it goes right. If I get it perfect, it might go where I want it to go. But if I release it late, it's gonna go left. So get that right shoulder down, and it'll allow you to swing on a straight arc. Now let me show you the second component. Now the second component is going to be the orientation of your elbow and the position of it. So it's going to be very difficult for you to deliver the ball online consistently with a lot of power if your elbow is too far to the outside. And one tip I will give you, or it's more of like an insight, is that if you're just standing there, if you're just standing there naturally, your hands are already going to be rotated inward, right? You don't really walk around like this, that's quite unnatural, and this is making me deeply uncomfortable standing like this, so I'm gonna stop doing it. But why that is relevant is because most people try to rotate the ball when, in all reality, your hands are already internally rotated in the direction you need to rotate it. So all you need to do is get that elbow and that hand, I almost like to, liken it like a spring or loading a coil. What you need to do is just load that arm. That's the same thing as if you're pressing a spring together and all you need to do at release is just let it go. You see how your hand already makes that motion. So there's no need to add that extra over rotation and that's where people start spinning it or they create too much rotation. They're not seeing their ball read the lane properly. What I tell most of the people when I give a lesson when they want to increase their power is I first get them to get their arm and their hand in the right position, like this, almost where like the front of your elbow is pointing where you want the ball to go. And I try and make them feel like they're throwing it straight. So once they can under-rotate it, they already know how to over-rotate it. It's going from 
the correct position to just fine tuning how much you need to rotate it. And also what makes that possible is that right shoulder dropping. Again, I'll show you. If you're like this, the ball is outside of my head. It is very difficult for me to try and get that hand on the inside of the ball. This does not feel comfortable. It is quite straining on the inside of my arm. So from there, it's very easy to just go elbow out and get that ball to come across you. But if you drop that elbow or drop that shoulder, as you can see here, my elbow already kind of naturally goes straight when I get in this position. Now, this position is quite uncomfortable, unnatural for me. But as you can see, it's so much easier for me to get all the way inside the ball there. But you don't really need to be quite there. But behind the ball, it's quite easy for me to be in that position when that shoulder drops. And it's very important for you to get that elbow, the front of that elbow pointing forward or that inside bone right there, staying as close to your body as possible because it's like as if you were picking up a bowling ball, right? If you pick up something like a bowling ball, 15 pounds, if you pick it up close to you, it's quite easy to do. But if I try and hold like this and try and move it up and down, it is quite a bit more effort. Same thing with what we're talking about here. From here, much easier to generate power as opposed to here. This is quite a bit of effort. And as you can see, that arc is not going particularly straight. So that is the second component to delivering the ball with a lot of power consistently. Now let's get to the last one. All right, and this third component is, it's quite simple, but very hard to achieve. And that is getting your hand under the ball or more specifically, getting your fingers under the, I guess the equator of the ball. So I'm gonna show you. So a lot of amateurs end up with their hand on top of the ball. And as you can see here, you can see the tips of my fingers are on top of the equator of the ball as if you were gonna draw a line through the center of the ball horizontally. Now, a lot of power players, amateur and professional, they manage to get that hand under and behind the ball. And as you can see here, my fingers are under that equator. What that allows me to do is that allows me to use all that ball and create action. Because the real hit action is going from here and uncoiling that hand. So if we're going from the top of the ball, we're already in that finished position. So all I can really do is just release the ball with not much. But if I get those fingers under the equator, I'm able to roll all that ball. And that's pretty much how the two-handers generate all that power, right? They get their hands like this, and now they're way under the equator of the ball. But now I'm gonna show you guys a great drill on how to implement all of that right here. All right guys, now a great drill to do to implement the things that we've been talking about, the three components, upper body orientation, elbow direction, and hand position, is to do the foul line drill or the no-step drill. You might have seen it in the two-handed release video, more or less the same stuff here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to the foul line, I'm gonna get into my finished position, and I'm just gonna do what we were talking about. I'm gonna get my shoulders in an orientation, which I like, and I'm gonna look down to make sure the ball is under my head. That's very important, because that's the position we wanna be in. So I'm gonna make sure of that, and I'm gonna try and load my hand so my fingers are under the equator, and get my elbow pointed forward, or even a little bit to the right to ensure that my elbow and my hand is in the right position, and I'm just gonna swing. Now we're not looking for ball speed, we're not looking for reverie or anything. I'm actually kind of looking to throw the ball pretty straight just to make sure my hand is staying up the back of it and making sure my elbow and all that is in the right position as well as feeling like the swing is getting a lot straighter just from that shoulder being dropped as opposed to going around my body. So you should be able to deliver the ball in a relatively consistent position doing this drill. But again, we're not looking for big power and all that. But that's pretty much the best drill to do. You could spend maybe 10, 15 minutes of your time before your practice session uh, doing it. Just get those drills in. You wanna implement this feel 
so that you can translate it back to your whole approach. So I would suggest maybe doing some foul line drills and then working your way back, doing a one step, three step, and then getting it into your full approach because trying to implement it into your full approach right away is quite difficult. You have a lot of other things that you're worrying about like your footwork and your backswing and all that. So just isolate what we're talking about here on the foul line drill and you'll get 500 rev rate hopefully in no time. But anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys learned something from this video. If you guys like these kind of videos, let me know down in the comments below. Again, merch drop, apparel EFX, all that good stuff. But anyways guys, that's all I got for you. Until next time, I'll see you.